One of the great things about living in the country is you can go plinking in your own backyard. But if you're like us, you're a little bit disgusted with the availability and the price of ammunition these days. And you've probably said to yourself, there's got to be a better way. Well, let me introduce you to the better way. Let me introduce you to the Benjamin Bulldog. It is a 357 PCP air gun. These are big bore air guns that do a really fine job of throwing these 357 caliber 158 grain pellets through paper at distances of up to 100 yards at speeds up to about 800 feet per second. You do the math. What does that mean to us? It means that we can get about 15 shots per fill and we can plink all day long for just the price of the lead because we make our own pellets and you can too. It's very easy to do and we will cover that on a later video. Now I'm not going to get into reviewing the gun or anything like that because there's plenty of videos out there on the Benjamin Bulldog. I encourage you to go find some and watch them. It's a great gun, but it does have one very annoying flaw that we've found. Now we find that pinging noise to be extremely annoying, especially on a gun that's as good as this one in every other way. Now fortunately there are a couple of ways to address that and we're going to show you one of them right now. This is called a D-Pinger. I bought this one from Tim over at hillairguns.com for 40 bucks and it is the solution to that awful noise. Now installing it may seem like a scary thing because you have to take this Benjamin Bulldog all the way apart but it's really not that big of a deal. We will show you how to do it right now. We'll start by placing the Benjamin Bulldog air gauge side up on the tailgate, and then we're gonna drain all of the air out of it. To drain the air, you need to remove the fill port cover. There's an opening in the stock right here, and up inside that opening, you're going to find that there is a Allen head screw that needs to be loosened up one turn to allow the air to come out. At this point, there's no air left in the gun and the gun's unloaded. We're gonna remove the barrel shroud first, leave the optics right where they are, they don't need to be removed. We need two tools to do this part. They are long reach Allen wrenches, a 764 and a 330 seconds. Pick the gun up. We're going to remove this screw first. Set the forestock on your toe and push firmly on the back of the Picatinny rail. The shroud will slide right off. With the barrel shroud removed and the gauge side up, we're going to remove these screws. Here's a tip, the screws are different lengths. So once you back them out, just leave them in the hole and they won't get lost and you won't confuse where they go later. Remove the rubber butt plate and set it aside. With all the screws loosened, remove the top cowling of the gun and set it aside. Remember your screws are still in the holes, so don't lose them. Now carefully remove the safety lever and spring and set them aside. Carefully lift the trigger and remove the trigger hinge pin and set it aside so it doesn't get lost. At this point, there's nothing left that's loose to fall out. Pick up the gun carefully and lay it over on its other side. We're going to remove the remaining screws here and here. Remember to leave the screws in the hole so they don't get lost and so they go right back in the right place. Pick up the cowling and set it aside. Now with the shrouds removed, you've exposed the barrel, the air reservoir, and the receiver. We're going to unscrew the reservoir from the receiver 
Counterclockwise, Lefty Lucy. Leave the spring and the valve in the receiver. Now we'll remove the reservoir adapter from the reservoir. Put the end of the deep pinger with the O-ring into the reservoir first and push it in just far enough so that there's room for the threads of the reservoir adapter to clear. Grab your reservoir adapter and screw it in. Your deep hanger is now installed. Now reinstall your reservoir over the top of the spring and valve and screw it down tight. Get the reservoir on as tight as you can by hand or 15 foot pounds approximately. Make sure it's fully seated. With your reservoir reinstalled, grab the part of the cowling with the least number of screws in it and reinstall it. You'll know it's lined up if the cutout on the cowling goes around the air inlet. Flip your Benjamin over carefully, taking care not to displace your trigger. Next, install your trigger hinge pin. It should go into a recess in the bottom of the cowling. Grab your safety and your safety retaining spring. Install your safety spring, just like this. Now this is the trickiest part of this whole job, putting the safety in place and getting it to stay there while you get the cowling on. So install it like this, and then find out how it wants to sit snug. Once you find the place where it sits without falling out, Go ahead and grab your top cowling and put it in place. Once you get the cowlings pushed together, run down the screws on either side of the trigger to hold them in place. Then tighten up the rest. Reinstall the rubber butt pad. It just slips on. and reinstall the screw. Tighten up the screw on the air release and go fill your gun. Well, our deep hanger is installed. Let's see how well this thing works. Now let's compare that to another gun that hasn't had the deep hanger installed yet. I'd say that's about an 85 to 90% reduction in ping. That's fantastic and really improves that gun. Now we bought ours for about 40 bucks from Tim over at hillairguns.com and you should be able to still get them there. Hope you get one of these things. You'll have a lot of fun with it.